Welcome to part five of the Pitfall Any% Percent tutorial series. If you missed any previous parts, check out the playlist in the description. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to part five of my Pitfall tutorial series. And you might be asking yourself, why is there a part five? Didn't you finish the game in part four? Well, yes we did. However, there's been a few updates to the game, along with a few things that I really want to clarify that I probably wasn't super clear about in the first four parts. And regardless, it's been a little while anyway. So I think it's just a good time for an update. So here we go. So we're just gonna start off here in Flooded Courtyard. And what I wanna show you first is how to properly do a triple jump. And you can see, I've actually managed to get a controller viewer set up. Uh, I just wanna point out that we've got BA, all these things. Uh, my buttons are a little weird, so I actually use, you can see Z on the top right there, that's my roll button. Uh, this won't matter whatsoever, uh, you can translate it to whichever button your roll is on. I just happen to use a different control scheme. The inputs are the exact same. So, how to do a triple jump? I was a little unclear last time, I feel. So now I'm going to try and be more clear. Doing a triple jump is super, super simple. So first off, you have to be in a roll. So we're gonna grab our crouch button, it's for me, it's a Z button up there at the top right, and we're gonna flick the control stick. So that's how you get into a roll. Very easy, you have to be in a roll to do a triple jump, pretty simple. Now, the other thing is, you can't do a triple jump when you're not moving. You see, I'm in the roll, if I try and do a triple jump, Harry will just stand up. It's no good. So you have to be in the roll, and you have to be at least moving a little bit. Even if it's just like that, even if it's just a little bit, you can do that. Now this actually counts if you're against a wall. So I kind of lied, you don't have to be moving. I'm holding against the wall here, as you can see, and I can still do a triple jump. So you at least have to be holding a direction. The control stick basically can't be in neutral like that. It has to be in a direction. Now all you do to do a triple jump, there's no, I think last time I may have said you have to go back and then forward or there's some weird thing you have to do. No, it's as easy as hold the direction let go of crouch and press jump. So I can even do it backwards. Uh, I didn't quite get there. And I, I, I can't get a triple jump, there it is. So if you wanna know the exact timings, I actually did time it in Dolphin. You wanna release crouch and then press jump nine to 10 or frames later. That's the exact timings. If you really wanna know the timing, so that's about one sixth of a second. So release and then press and you get a triple jump. So release and press. That's all you have to do, release, and press jump. And there is a specific timing to it. Now if you're struggling with triple jumps, it's pretty easy to self-diagnose. So if you get this, you can see Harry is getting this weird float. You're pressing jump too early. You have to release crouch earlier or press jump later. And if you're getting this one, where he just does this regular jump, you're pressing jump too late. So you need to press jump earlier or I guess release crouch later. They, they have to come closer together. So this is pressing jump too late, this is pressing jump too early, and uh, I was hoping to get one just right, there we go, that's just right. So hopefully that clears it up for people. Ah, oh, and also, against the wall, it's the same thing, too early, too late, and just right. So it's as easy as that, release crouch, press jump, and you get your triple jump. It's all about timing. Next up, we have made our way to Bittenbinder's Camp, and that's because there is a New strat here. Uh, in saying that, I would not attempt this strat if you're not comfortable with the game yet. Uh, basically, this strat is for if you're on any console that struggles to do this clip. And you can see I'm kind of stuck in the wall right now. There are kind of ways to get through the wall, but on consoles such as GameCube PAL, which is the one I'm playing on, unfortunately, I am stuck in the region of Australia. We do play on PAL, and I don't have an NTSC GameCube, or disc, so I have really no choice. Uh, if you're stuck on a console like that, uh, there may be other consoles that this is applicable to, that you may find uh, unsure and stuff as, such as PS2 and Xbox and PC. If you're curious about version differences, the person to talk to is Avasam. He knows most of the version differences, and if we don't know a version difference, well, feel free to boot up your game and figure it out for yourself. So obviously, as I just showed, the normal strat is to go over here and clip through the wall and do the funny jump up the uh, kind of inside of the wall there. There is a new strat, and actually there was a development found to this strat 
just last week as I'm recording this, and it's the reason why I'm actually re-recording this. So we're gonna jump up on this rock here, and we're gonna have to do a fairly tricky triple jump. So if you try and do a forward triple jump, you can see how Harry kind of gets this, this, this um, weird little jump. It's because you can't actually do a triple jump while you're airborne, and if you try and do it in the incorrect way, Harry, because there's, see this little, how it slopes down to the left here, Harry will get airborne and you won't be able to triple jump. So you kind of have to hold backwards and you can see where, uh, you have to go back and then forwards. And luckily I have my input viewer so I don't actually have to explain it that much. And we get up here and we're just holding it to the wall so we stay there. Now there's two ways to get it from here. Either you can do a really tricky triple jump that I just failed. Now the problem is that this triple jump has very, very awkward timing and if you mess it up, Harry just gets stuck here. As you can see, I'm pressing buttons, nothing's happening. So we'd have to reset. However, we can use the same trick as we use in Monkey Temple Skip, which we will be getting to shortly. And we can do this. And you can see what I did with was I kind of roll my control stick along the left. And that's just to try and get the uh, the ledge grab. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get it there. So I'll try this again. Up there, and we have to go here. And you can see is a is a specific angle that you have to get. Uh, just play around with it and find it. This is approximately, I'd say, two to three seconds faster than the other method, done perfectly. Maybe even a little bit faster. And I would also only recommend it if you are experienced at the game and you just want that little bit of extra time. It is completely up to you guys. The old way is still perfectly acceptable. And honestly, if you're learning the game, that is the one I will learn first. And just to finish up bit and bind this here, before we would do the roll, and we do this awkward th thing through here, and we'd be able to get up there. However, there's a much better way. If we just run against this wall, we just tap roll, and Harry just walks up. As easy as that. <laughs> just thought I might point out that little improvement there. Okay guys, so now we travel all the way back to Flooded Courtyard because we are of course going to go over Monkey Temple Skip. So it was a bit unfortunate in that this trick actually had its major update not long after the tutorial released. So a lot of people who had been learning of the tutorial have learned the old way. Now, I want you to forget everything you know about the old way because it is not good. It is just not as good as this way. This way is so much better, much more consistent and will benefit you more in the long run. You'll get more runs done, etc., etc. So we're going to start the same way. We're going to jump over here and jump over here. Pretty easy. We're going to hold into the wall, and you'll never fall off as long as you hold into the wall. For the most part, sometimes you do. So before, obviously, we would do this, and we will grab on, and we'd try and clip through a wall, and you can see I didn't get the clip because clipping through that wall sucks. It sucks. Instead, we're going to do the same trick that I basically just showed you back in Bit and Binders Camp. So we do this, Harry gets this floating state, and when you press A again, you can see we get a little bit of height there. We're gonna use that bit of height to get over to that rock up there. So the same rock as we went to in the original Monkey Temple skip, it's just that we're doing it in bounds this time. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna go over, and you can see that I'm holding about an up left on the control stick there. So the trick is that this floating state, if you do it over here, Harry just falls. So you, what I would recommend, and to get it really consistent, is that I go over here and I actually start right, I initiate it, and I start sliding to the left and press it, and that actually gets my momentum going towards the left, so the jump's much easier. The jump after the triple jump is actually not that hard. I find it better, you have to do that, and right on the edge of the block, and unfortunately sometimes you will get that, uh, that just happens if you go, you try and do it just after the edge of that block. So I do that, right about the edge of that block. And yeah, as long as I'm moving towards the left, it's actually a fairly lenient jump. So I'll show you one more time, just for those in the back that weren't paying attention. I'll go here, here. And honestly, I wasn't even, I could have been holding more left there, maybe even a little less left. It's a very lenient jump at the end of the day. But that was just the easy part. Next comes the hard part. Now, I'm gonna to attempt to show you the any percent way to do this. Unfortunately, I did not have much experience with the any percent way. I'm used to doing this the 100% way. So, we're going to go on to, we'll go back into this block, and what we're gonna do, double jump up here, double jump up here. And the block we're aiming for is the one just above our heads there. 
two ways to do it. First is the 100% way, which is pretty much the exact same way as we just did. And you can see I hold almost all the way left there. So that is using the same trick as we just did, where Harry goes a little airborne like that. And then we can use the double jump to get to Nair. So this is just using the exact same trick as I just showed you. Harry gets this little walk up the wall, and then we do a double jump right to the rock. Now there is a slightly easier way using your rising strike. And uh, the reason that this is the 100% is because 100% doesn't actually have rising strike at this part of the game. But we can roll here, and it's a bit hard to get this rising strike. You kind of have to hold all the way to the left. Uh, unfortunately, if Harry punches a wall, he won't rising strike. So we have to, and I'll try and reset it again here. So we roll, that clips our hitbox slightly into the wall, and we hold all the way left. And we can get the rising strike pretty much every time. And if you really want to see how I did that, obviously, roll into the wall. Uh, just check my, luckily I do have my controller helping you out there. So you can actually see the exact buttons I'm pressing there. Fairly simple trick in theory, but the execution can be a little tricky and tight. This is definitely a trick you want to practice a bit because it's easy enough to get this every now and then, but to get it fast and consistent, that is the key. This is a trick that will fairly likely gatekeep a lot of your runs until you can get it right. And I may as well just show you the end of the run. So a few people, will, I think, were wondering how I kind of do the ending here. So I go to there, and basically I'm trying to cut every corner. Now actually you can make, you can actually make that jump. The reason I didn't is because I have dive in this save state. I apologize for that. I'm using one of my 100% save states. So basically you can see I'm just trying to cut every corner I can. Now if you fall down here, uh, the trick, fall into the water and get eaten by a croc. That's the best way to do it. You'll just get put right back up, lose you a bit of time, but at least you won't lose the run. And we come down to what is probably the last major update to the run as of recording this. Uh, as Harry does his little dance, we are in Turtle Monument, and uh, normally we would go into the Turtle Monument, get dive, get the Ghost Torch, and proceed to do the early teleporter. In the new 80% run, we don't go into the turtle at all. We're going to ignore that. We don't like dive. Dive is, is messy. We don't like it. We're just instantly going to go over here and dodge the monkey, hopefully, onto the rock here. Double jump up to here. And we're going to dash at this. And you see this dark line right above Harry's head here? As soon as he passes that, he's going to zoom up the wall, basically, like that. And then we're going to jump up here, nice and easy. Uh, you can also do eye spin kick up here because I don't have rising strike in this safe state. Apologies. But you can also rising strike up here. It makes it a little easier. And there's a few ways to do this jump here. But the main thing you want to do, don't start over here. If you start over here and try and jump over there and you move from left to right, as in looking at the screen from the left of the screen to the right of the screen, chances are you'll hit the load zone. A secret of this game is that load zones are only one way. If you're moving left to right, you have a chance to go through the load zone. If you're moving right to left here, you will almost never go through the load zone. So we want to actually start way over the right here, and you can either do the ultra fast strat where you dash onto this log here, then dash and spin kick. There is a bit of a risk to that. It is faster but riskier. Or you can do the kind of safe strat. Uh, it's a little harder with dive, but we can do this, and we just do that, and we can just jump over there. And starting over the right-hand side of that rock over there, you'll almost never hit the load zone. So that is my recommendation. Now, we don't have Ghost Torch, we don't have anything. We're just gonna go into the teleporter. And now we come to part two of the major update. So we don't have Ghost Torch. How are we gonna get through the ice wall? Well, we're gonna do the ice wall skip. And I briefly mentioned this in my last tutorial. I said it was basically, I don't know what I said. Maybe I said it was impossible. Maybe I said it was hard. End of the day, it was very new, and we didn't know much about it. However, now we do. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to try and get through here, and we're basically gonna try and get through this little gap right here. That's our aim. So number one rule of doing this, once you're in here, don't touch your camera buttons, because this happens, and now you can't see anything. So that's a bit of a thing not to do. Make sure you get your camera lined up first. What we wanna do, we're gonna run at this wall, you've touched your camera buttons before this, get your camera nice and lined up, I'm going to press roll, and we actually were lucky to get into there. Sometimes you press roll and you're in here, and you just want to spam A. 
until you get out. So notice how I just press roll and let it go immediately. And sometimes you'll stand up, sometimes you won't. Irrelevant, if you don't stand up, I'll try and get one where I don't stand up. I just spam A and eventually you'll stand up. So easy done. So once we're running into this wall, all you wanna do is alternate roll and jump and you'll just stand up and jump. And it'll push you further into the wall. If you go at about this line straight, you might be pushed the, through the left side of the wall. You usually wanna hold back at about this angle, top right. And that gives you much more chance to get through the right side of the wall. And it's a little faster in the end. Unfortunately, this is very inconsistent. You can see I'm actually going through the left side of the wall there. Then that's fine if you go through the left side of the wall. You just do a quick double jump or spin kick and you'll end up over here. However, getting through the, the right side of the ice wall is much faster. So I'm gonna try and do it here. Unfortunately, it's not been much success today. I'm basically holding, there we go. I was basically holding almost uh, top right to right there. So that's how you get through the wall. It is a little inconsistent, but with some practice, it's not too hard. I'm just gonna show it again. So I'm just gonna try and show it again here. All you do, you get into this little spot and just roll and just spam jump. And you'll eventually come out of your roll. Then you roll and you jump and you roll and you jump. And if you're not getting through, maybe just hold a different direction. Unfortunately, it does. And once you see the camera doing that, you know you're through. So it is a little inconsistent. Sometimes you get pushed through the left side. Sometimes you'll be able to get through the right side and get a really quick clip. Practice it a lot. End of the day, if you're not getting through and you're stuffing up, come out of the wall, start again, and just reset a new. There is a new trick here that I am not the best at, so I'm going to try and get it here. Basically, it involves dashing towards here and getting the sling out at the correct time. Now, I'm not the best at this. I'm going to try here. So what I think you want to do, you want to aim and then turn around and then Harry slides back. So I'm gonna try and get it here. There we go, okay. So that's that's kind of how you get it like that. This is a little tricky. Uh, it's not something I've practiced a lot. It was a new discovery by, I believe, Bloopy found it. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Make sure you get in those comments and you can see we've clicked through there and oh, we didn't quite make it. It's a little tricky, it, it, it's all about the angle you kind of come at and the way Harry's pointing, but it is a new little clip and I thought I might as well point it out. Uh, something I definitely need to practice, let's just say that. So if you really want a good tutorial, I would recommend Bloopy's little tutorial, which he did very recently. It just goes to show there are always new tricks to learn. So part four, I guess we're up to now, of the new setup as the camera doesn't want to agree with me, is diveless geyser. Now, this is not as hard as it seems. It is very similar to the dive setup. So with the dive setup, what I said to do is run out basically where I'm pointing now, and then we go back left and we dive in that direction. Now we wanna do the same thing, so same direction, but instead of diving, what we wanna do is as we get over the edge, we wanna punch towards the back left. That will get our momentum traveling in that direction because Punch gives you instant momentum. Doesn't matter what direction you push, it'll give you instant momentum. And while Harry is kind of fan standing on the phantom ground with the coyote time, or coyote time, or however you pronounce it, we're gonna do a quick spin kick. Spin kick, number one, gets your distance, and number two, you'll never bonk on a spin kick. Okay, so just set up like this, punch towards our back left, and then do an instant spin kick. And it might be a bit hard to see. And you can see we'll ledge grab there. So go back, check exactly what I did there, but all it is is a punch and a spin kick. It's all about timing. Okay, so one more time. Hopefully I don't embarrass myself and die. It's gonna be very quick, so make sure you watch it closely. Uh, go 0 0.5 speed, 0 0.25 time speed if you need. Hopefully I don't mess it up for you guys. So punch back left and spin kick just like that. Not too hard once you kind of get it down all about practice and just about not panicking when you have to run over the void. It's not as hard as it looks. And once again, all practice. So just one last, I would call it a minor update to the route. And this kind of occurs as a consequence of what happened earlier in the route. So we did not pick up dive earlier on in the run. We would normally use the dive to dive across this gap. Now this jump is basically impossible without dive. It might be technically possible, but I would not recommend it whatsoever. Instead, we're gonna go through the arch, 
we're going to go over here and we're going to jump over here and if you don't get the teeter animation we can then just easily run to here and jump over there. So just a little tiny minor update just remember to do that. Try not to do this big jump because you might not have a good time. And that guys is the end of part 5 of the tutorial series. Potentially maybe a part 6 in the future if the run changes substantially although I don't think it will but maybe some minor updates here and there, that would not surprise me. So thank you very much for watching. Once again, I will link uh, Bloopy's tutorials. He did, what is that croc doing over there? Uh, he did a few little tutorials about stuff that you saw in this tutorial. Please go check him out. Uh, it's best to have multiple views on certain topics. He may have explained something better than I did. Maybe I explained something better than he did. It's better to get both views, compare them, whatever makes you better at Pitfall, honestly. So thank you very much for watching. And yeah, I guess I'll catch you in part six, potentially. This has been Ripper.